Welcome, and thank you for joining us for the very last Dealer On webinar of 2014, How to Get More Shoppers to Your Website Inventory. My name is Eliana Raggio, and I'll be your moderator today. And today's webinar is being presented by Dealer On. For anyone who isn't familiar with Dealer On, well, we're an award-winning website development company and digital agency, best known for our amazing SEO, the absolute best customer service, and the highest converting website designs in the industry, including the brand new Chameleon Responsive Website Platform. We're so committed to lead conversion, optimization, and customer service that Dealeron is still the only company in the industry to offer a money-back lead guarantee program. So the question really is, does your website company guarantee you a 50% lift in leads or your money back? Well, maybe you should check us out at the gorgeous brand new Dealeron website, Dealeron.com. Also want to let you know that Dealeron will be exhibiting and presenting at the upcoming NADA convention in San Francisco next month. So if you're going to be there, please stop by booth 5552W, say hi. I just got my ticket, so I'm going to be there, and I'd love to see you, take a picture with you. We'll post it on social. It'll be a good time, I promise. We have the best booth around. You don't want to miss it. And while you're there doing your NADA thing, please check out the speaking sessions from these Dealer On executives, too. And we have a great show in store for you today. We are very pleased to have Denise Chuddy as our presenter today. Denise Chuddy is co-founder and chief revenue and product officer at LotLinks, a fast-growing tech company and its game-changing shopper targeting platform that's connecting vehicle buyers directly to the dealership's vehicle detail pages, enabling higher sales velocity and lower cost per sale. Denise joined LotLinks after a storied career at Google, where she held a number of executive positions. She she launched Google's national automotive team and also led Google's consumer packaged goods team where her work with Procter & Gamble was featured in the Wall Street Journal. Chuddy's most recent role at Google was leading the CPG and healthcare display teams at YouTube. And before Google, Denise was part of the original management team at Cars.com as the company's first vice president of national sales where she was responsible for e-commerce and national advertising products and revenue that generated 70% profit margins for the company. Denise began her career in the automotive industry at the prominent ad agency BBDO where she developed and managed media campaigns for regional Dodge dealership groups. Denise is a frequent guest lecturer on digital marketing and she can be reached at Denise at lotlinks.com. Now, during the presentation, if you have any questions, please use the question feature located on the corner of your screen to submit them. At the end of the presentation, we'll answer those questions of general interest. If we're unable to get to your question live, don't worry, we're going to try our best to respond by email later today. Also, don't forget, a link to download a copy of this webinar recording will also be emailed to you later today for your reference. And hey, feel free to share that with your friends and colleagues. Ooh, and guess what? Our good friends at LotLinks are giving away two very cool prizes today on the webinar. First, one of you lucky webinar attendees is going to be winning two special reservations to their exciting invitation-only party at the lovely Samovar Restaurant during the upcoming NADA convention in San Francisco. Oh, it's so pretty there. Now, if you're not going to NADA, well, we have a prize for you, too. One of you lucky webinar attendees will be winning three months free subscription to the revolutionary LotLinks advertising program. The highest ROI, lowest cost, and most effective way to connect car buyers to your inventory and move that inventory off your lot even faster. This prize is valued at almost $6,000. And can I just say, it is a tremendous prize for your dealership. You have to be on the live broadcast to win it, though. So stay tuned, and you could be the one walking away with one of these awesome prizes today. Also, at the conclusion of this webinar, you're going to receive a short survey. So fill it out. We're always looking for quality feedback from our audience. Today, we're going to randomly select a couple of people from all the completed surveys to also win some Google prizes. So let's get started. Let's learn how to get more shoppers to your website inventory. Denise Chuddy, what an honor and a pleasure to have you here today. And thank you so much for doing the very last Dealer On webinar of the year. Thank you, Eliana. And thanks for all the folks who dialed in today. As you can see on this picture, we are going to focus on website inventory, merchandising best practices. And as Eliana said, at the end of the day, 
the end result is how do we move more metal faster. I love it. And this is a great topic, especially at the end of the year. People are still closing out the year, but you know what? They're gearing up for 2015. So, Denise, thank you so much for picking such a relevant topic and one that dealerships sometimes struggle with. So why don't you start off by telling everyone the kinds of things we're going to be learning about today. So we want to talk about the why, why is promoting your inventory important, how do you do it effectively, and what should you measure. So the specific objectives we'll review today is, again, you know, why, why should you merchandise your VINs? Well, it's going to move metal faster. We'll show some data um, on how we've measured that. I also want to talk about why it's important for each dealer to have a VIN distribution strategy with today's digitally savvy shopper. We'll go through some key stats and some key insights on what the shopper today is doing. But at the end of the day, all the data points to one clear fact, and that's that people want to see the cars. They want to see the cars early and often in their shopping process. And so the more we can show them cars and actual vehicle, the more successful our, our dealer customers will be in getting their vehicles to leave a lot faster. And then we'll go specifically into how to deploy a strategy to move your metal faster by showing these VINs. And what we call that at, at Lot Links is deep linking. So I'll go through some specific examples and we'll go to a live demo. And then also I want to share some best practices for what to measure. We certainly have our own metrics at Lot Links that we provide our dealer customers, but we also have a large number of very sophisticated dealer customers who uh, use Google Analytics. And the first thing that surprises and delights them is the actual traffic that they can track in their analytics. So we thought it would be helpful for you to see what some of our dealer customers are doing. And certainly, as Eliana said at the end, we want to answer questions. Yes, yes. So audience, if you have questions during the presentation, send them in during the presentation, but we will have a very robust question and answer session with the great Denise Chuddy. And if you're going to tweet out anything, hey, please tag me in it. I'm at Eliana Raggio, hashtag dealer on Webby, or at LotLinks. We'd love to see what you came up with. Denise, take it away. All right, so let's get started here. First thing I want to say is Vintenders viewing vehicles is fantastic. And we vehemently believe that at Lotlinks. And again, my name is Denise. I mean Denise Chuddy. Wanted to add, have a little Vin humor at the beginning of our presentation to get people um, excited, and hopefully you're all perked up to hear about viewing vehicles by Vin tenders. I I love your cheesiness, by the way. Thank you, Denise. <laughs> I finished the year strong, Eliana. Right? So no doubt. No doubt. <laughs> I want to tell the story of a vehicle that um, you might have on your lot, and it's a 2013 Mercedes C-Class. So the Mercedes C-Class from 2013, when it launched, it launched in a crowded marketplace. It's a very competitive set with BMW 3 Series, Audi A4, A4 the Cadillac ATS. Also had, I would say, modest reviews for the vehicle. So if you look at professional reviews, this was a vehicle that when it launched, some professional reviewers called it tired, maybe needed a remodel. Uh, at best, it got some reviews that talked about performance in space, which we all know when you talk about performance in space about a car, you're, you're, you're struggling for real exciting things to say. And even when you looked at consumer reviews for this car, mixed reviews, again, modest at best. Some folks thought it was sweet, but other folks, uh, weren't that excited about it. One reviewer actually said it was the poor man's limousine. So all of that, you know, fodder and um, about that vehicle, what en ended up happening with the Mercedes C-Class is it was an okay car in, in the eyes of a dealer. Average days on lot, however, are 389 for that particular vehicle. So if you have one of these on your lot, you're probably thinking, you know, I really need to move this faster. It's not moving itself necessarily. Um, you know, you've had it on lot. Maybe you're out east and you even had it covered in snow last month. So when we look at this type of vehicle, this is where we really, again, talk about how, how do you take a vehicle like this? It's certainly there's a buyer for it, but how do you expose this vehicle to the right audience to make sure that you're moving your cars faster off lot? 
So I'm going to show you uh, the results we get at, at lot links by using a VIN display strategy, and then we'll go into the specifics of, of, of how you do it. So for this particular vehicle, we had about 1,100 of these uh, through November displayed through our system. And what we saw is when we take a specific VIN like this and we move it through a promotional engine and specifically promote one car at a time, we can see that we can move the, these cars significantly faster. So in this case, for this particular vehicle, we were able to decrease time on lot from 389 days to 154 days. So dealers who work on a VIN display strategy, they, have, they can move at a 60% faster clip moving vehicles off lot. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Let me just give a sidebar on how we got this data. Some of you might be thinking, you know, how do they know these days on lot? One of the things we do at LotLinks is we actively go out and, and look at all the inventory that's active on a dealer's digital lot 24-7, and we therefore are able to use our technology to understand when a vehicle hits a dealer's lot and when it leaves. So we use this to look at vehicles that are promoted through the LotLinks VIN promotion system, our deep linking, and we compare it to vehicles that are promoted understand how are we improving our dealer customer's ability to move vehicles faster. So that's the crux of what we're going to talk about today. And what we believe at LotLinks is the more people who view specific inventory, the faster your sales will be. Very simple concept for this presentation today. It really is all about product merchandising 101 that the more you can merchandise your vehicles at specific products and gain exposure for those specific vehicles, the more you're going to sell faster. I equate this to what the consumer packaged goods do in a store, right? So if you're a consumer packaged goods company, in this example, Crest, for example, what they do is when they need to move merchandise and build their brand, they take their product and they create an end cap display. What we want to talk about today is how, you, how do you create that end cap display across all digital devices to make sure your individual vehicles are seen at the moment of relevance. In this case, clearly the Crest end cap display is in the oral care, personal care area, highly relevant placement, stands out, great packaging and merchandise. This is what we're going to talk about today, creating that end cap display for you. Let's go to a poll question, Eliana. I think that's a that's great amazing. idea. Thank you so much, Denise. All right, audience, guess what? We only have two poll questions for you today, and this one is your first. So we'd love it if you'd answer it, and let's find out what we got going on all over the country. So the question is, which advertising channel that you are using today do you feel is the most effective at delivering customers to your dealership? Please select one of the following answers. Which one do you feel is the most effective at delivering customers to your dealership? Third-party leads, Google AdWords or paid search, maybe you like traditional TV, radio, newspaper, that kind of thing. Do you find that your own website is the best at delivering customers to your dealership or is it the last choice? I have no idea. <laughs> Once we get a majority of those votes, we will close the poll and we will share the results. And uh, <laughs> yes, to the dealership. So which advertising channel that you are using do you feel is the most effective at delivering customers to your dealership? Please select one of the following answers. Third party leads. Google AdWords or paid search or any kind of PPC, traditional advertising like TV, radio, and newspaper, your very own dealership website, or you just don't know. Audience, can I just say, I'm going to miss you. I'm not going to be here for the next three weeks, but I love that almost everyone has voted on this poll. You guys just rock, and I just, I'm so blessed. Thank you so much for getting involved with our poll questions. Really, really appreciate it. All right, so I'll tell you what. Let's close this poll. Uh, I mean, uh, Denise, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, we're, we're ready. All right, let's close this poll and share these results. All right, let's go in order. 26%, so more than a quarter of today's uh, awesome audience, says that they feel third-party leads 
are their most effective channel at delivering customers to their dealership. That's 26 percent, Denise, all right? 15 percent said that it's PPC, Google AdWords, and paid search that does it for them. Six percent of today's audience say that they believe it's traditional advertising that still does the best thing for them in their area. But the majority of today's audience, 53 percent in fact, said that it's their own website that gets more people coming to their dealership. And of course, I told you my audience was really smart, Denise, right? Yes. Not one single person picked the last response, which was, I have no idea. Now, Denise, does this information help you out? Is this what you were thinking it was going to be? I love it. I love it. It's actually what we believe that Botlinks consumers want to do. So, Eliana, I'm going to now start talking about consumer shopping trends yes. that you think are impacting this journey where we believe the, the customer today more than ever wants to get to the dealer. So the next section, I'll go through those trends, and then we will then go live and look at some demos of how does deep linking work and how do you create a VIN display program. Let's do it. All right. So the five consumer shopping shifts you must know. Number one, people are searching all the time when they're in market for a car. They search at the beginning of the process, in the middle, three quarters of the way through, at the end. They want to see vehicles all the time. And they look at 84, they conduct 84 different vehicle searches across a variety of automotive websites and search engines across 45 days. And we're going to go through each of these specifically. I've tried to pull out at least two, two different studies to support each of these shifts that um, are at the, the cornerstone of what we do at Lot Links. And people are visiting more sites than ever. So in that journey, they, they are, uh, it's, it's a fragmented world in automotive digital marketing. So people are going to, this is a Google study, over 24 different sites. They're shunning lead forms. So those of you who uh, like your third-party leads and, and know that they're delivering value for you, you probably and likely have seen that fewer and fewer people want to fill them out. One thing that really popped in 2013, and I'm shocked that more of us in the industry are talking about this, is uh, many studies started to really showcase that the number one place people want to go to when they're in market for a car is the dealer site. So the J.D. Power Automotive Internet Study for their new car shoppers depicted this and found that insight. The Google Study also in 2013 uh, pulled out that key insight. So um, we really believe that, that this was a market that years ago we all built where uh, folks wanted to go to third-party sites. Then OEM sites started to become more sophisticated and a robust source of information. And now the time has come where it's actually the dealer site, the, the, the client who has the, the car where customers want to go. And then finally, people are shopping more online than offline. You know, you probably have seen the studies that people will spend 11 hours online, three hours at the actual dealership. So we're going to talk about each of these, these shifts because, again, these really are giving you the platform and I would say the, the permission, if you will, to take an aggressive approach about promoting your own vehicle inventory and your own dealership. So first of all, people are searching all the time. On the left is Polk's, a Polk study that shows that when they look at the key performance indicators of what leads people to buy cars, that people conduct 84 different types of inventory searches. And on the right-hand side, you can see it starts at the beginning of the process and at the end of the process. I know years ago we used to all assume and we would build our websites that we had to give people the research first. They didn't want to look at the actual vehicles until they had an idea of what they wanted to watch. But today's consumer is conditioned to shop by looking at products. That's how we shop for everything uh, when, when we're online. We want to see the physical products. So cars are no different nowadays. Second, People are visiting more sites and doing more things in their digital journey to find a car than, than ever before. And this is the Google research that shows that there are 24 different types of research touch points. So indeed, it's a very, very fragmented world out there when you're trying to promote your inventory and, and gain exposure to car shoppers. And car shoppers today also shun lead forms. You know, I, I think the, the reality is, is, in, is that most people are on their second or third time of buying a car using digital devices. And many people, when they first filled out your, 
lead forms years ago, they, you know, from what we can tell, they didn't seem to get the value that they thought they would get for giving up personal information. There's that big question about why am I giving you my, my name, my email, or my phone number when, you know, I know the car I want, I know how to find it. We call these folks self-directed, that people are, are sophisticated at using digital to find what they want, that they're finding less and less value in the traditional lead form. And the two sources here that we point to to support this is the Cobalt Research that says only 1% of auto shoppers submit an email lead. And they look at the whole landscape of, of every type of website. Dadium is only looking at dealer websites. And they, they reported last month that 2.3% of visitors to dealer websites submit a lead. So again, we seem to have a, an industry that's really focused on this 1% to 2%. Whereas we want to talk today about how do you get the other 98% of people who are out there in the market for a car and how do you engage with them. And then four, they want to get to the dealer site. So on the left hand side, again, this is that J.D. Power automotive shopping study that for the first time showed that dealers were the number one source where people wanted to go to find a car. I think a lot of that has to do with it, not only the sophistication of the car shopper, but also the sophistication of the car dealer. Websites are really good now. Um, you know, dealers are investing in, in their websites. They're doing a great job of driving traffic and making sure that they appear when people are searching. And you look at the, the you know, trajectory in a very short time, about a decade, it, people have nearly, you've nearly doubled the number of people who said the dealer's website is the, the key place. And interestingly enough, OEM sites are, are critical in the shopping process as well, but most people who go to an OEM site will also go to the dealer site nearly within the same session. And then the final thing about consumers today, oh, I wanted to actually show this one. I thought this was really interesting. This is a uh, female shopping site that just published last or two weeks ago their own report that shows the same exact thing, that even when they look at a concentrated audience of women, and here they, they reached out to 3,200 women and ask them, what's the most important source for you when you're shopping for a car? Again, dealerships pop to the top. Hmm, interesting. Yes, so uh, three studies, right, all pointing to the same thing. I'm a believer. How about you, Eliana? I, I was always a believer. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, but I'm all about the website. <laughs> So the fifth and final consumer insight we want to uh, showcase today is people are shopping more online than offline. On the left-hand side, CNBC covered this at the beginning of the year and uh, pointed to that, that trend of people are doing more research online. They're limiting their time in the dealership. Fewer test drives are being conducted. And on the right-hand side, again, two data points. So McKinsey, they do an automotive, annual automotive study, and their numbers state that People visit about 1.6 dealerships, down from five, ten years ago. And J.D. Power also points to fewer visits, although they also align with it. more people. The more people do research online, they're more likely to visit a few more. But again, the numbers are clear, is that people are spending more time online than offline. So it's really, really important for dealers, as well as uh, and here there are a lot of agencies on the line for you to work with your dealers and making sure that their vehicles are seen up front and all across a consumer's digital journey because the reality is you don't have that same opportunity to close them at the dealership. They're coming in armed and ready. How we look at this is we call these car shoppers self-directed. And this is an actual quote from one of our dealer customers that said, they show up on lot, they're totally anonymous until now, but they're well informed and know what they want. And in our discussions with dealers, dealers say that out of every 100 car shoppers that they meet on the lot, 27% of them are driven in by third-party leads. And they, they tell us that about 5% of those convert to a sale. So out of 100 car shoppers, you're getting about 1.4 sales. We're also told then that about 3% are in-house leads. So somebody who might have bought the vehicle from that dealer in the past or uh, went directly to the dealer site. And those converted a slightly higher rate at 7%. And then finally, the majority of people, so that leaves 70% of people, are anonymous and self-directed. So they've done the research. They've gone to 24 different places and conducted 84 inventory searches and armed themselves. 
And these people tend to convert at a higher rate. They're ready, ready to move, and they account for the majority of sales. In fact, they account for almost 95% of sales. So while we've built an industry that's focused on, on the third-party lead side, what we really want to import on the audience today is we've checked that box, things are going well over there, but let's all get together and focus on these 70% that account for 95% of a dealer's sales, and how do we influence and connect with these anonymous and self-directed shoppers. But before I tell you how, Eliana, can we go to another poll question? Yes, we can, Denise. All right, audience, your second and final poll question of the day is on the screen now. Now, for this one, we're going to ask you to pick two answers, all right? So which two of the following are your most common pricing models for acquiring new customers. Now, there's lots of different pricing models that are used out there, but we want to know which two are the most common with all of the vendors that you currently use. So please select the two that apply. Is it, do you get charged by cost per lead, cost per click, cost per acquisition, cost per 1,000 impressions, or don't know, don't care, I just want the customers? Couldn't care less. All right, so whatever it is, we want to know. All right, which two of the following are your most common pricing models when you're doing all that advertising stuff? Um, votes are coming in fast, and audience, I can't thank you enough. You guys are, you always, always, always impress me by your knowledge and your wit and your speed. <laughs> so thank you so much. And we're going to wait for a few more votes to come in. Now, Denise, while we're waiting for some more votes to come in, I'm curious, um, do certain kinds of advertisers, like for instance, does pay, do, do all pay-per-click advertisers, for instance, charge one way, or it really is like however that company in particular chooses to price their things? Yes, yeah, specifically for a pay-per-click, it typically is you pay when somebody um, actually is transitioned to your site. So it is indeed on the click. And one of the things when we talk to our dealer customers who might do a pay-per-click model, one of the things we talk um, a lot about, and I think we'll all be hearing a lot more about in coming months, is you know, making sure that your you're discounting for bots. You're not counting bot traffic. There tends to be a lot of bot traffic. You're discounting for an IP. So on the cost per click model, a lot to consider. It's exciting when you get that shopper over to your site, but there's also a lot to consider in terms of making sure that's an actual person and it's not some algorithm or right. some bot traffic or somebody who um, is in you know a foreign country who is never going to be able to travel to Chicago, Illinois, and buy a car. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Let's see what our audience had to say today, because I, I don't know. I, I think you're going to be really surprised by these answers. All right, so let's close this poll, and let's share the results. All right, so we asked everyone to, to select two, so obviously this is going to add up to more than 100%. But the majority, 72% of today's audience, said that most commonly they see cost per lead. So that's that first answer, okay? Um, it goes down from there. 47%, so nearly half, said that they get charged cost per click. 35% said it's cost per acquisition that they see a lot. 16% said it's cost per 1,000 impressions. And then there's that smart 11%. They say they don't know, they don't care, they just want the customers. How do they get them? Denise, is that what you were thinking you were going to see? Interesting. I, you know, to be honest, the cost per lead was higher than I expected. Me too. Really interesting. Very really interesting. Fun. Audience, thank you so much for playing along with our poll questions. We really appreciate it. And Denise, back to you. Great. And, and one of the reasons why we asked that question is we're going to talk about when you do a strategy for merchandising your VINs and you're actually focused on growing an audience VIN by VIN, you know, there, there are many, many choices, and we're going to introduce a, a new choice, which is a, a pay-per-shopper model. So um, that was one of the reasons why Eliana and I wanted to understand where folks were thinking and what was uh, most common for them. 
So with that, let's shift to, we talked about the, the results, right? When you show and showcase your vehicles VIN by VIN, we talked about how you can move metal faster by increased reach and frequency. We then talked about the consumer trends. People are searching for more cars. They're going to a variety of sites. It's a very fragmented model right now for, for marketers to try to connect with all of those shoppers. And the one thing that is clear is they're raising their hand and saying, I, I want to go to the dealer's site. I know that's where the inventory is. And um, you know, I, I want to make that journey and end up at, at my dealership site. So let's now talk about how we do that. And we're going to talk specifically about how we do that at lot links. And we call this deep linking. So the illustration here that you're, oh, excuse me, I'm going to stop. Uh, before I show you that, I want to talk about the formula that will make much more sense when you see what we do. So the formula for what we do is what we call reach plus frequency. So reaching the maximum number of car shoppers and actually making sure that that VIN appears multiple times to a relevant audience. So that relevant is the common denominator, denominator for both reach and frequency. We really want to make sure that we stress that point that you, know, you can get, there are a lot of choices out there for how you deploy your marketing budget, but relevance in today's digital world is highly, highly critical and important in making sure you're in the right context meaning you're in a shopping environment and you've got the right signals for which vehicle to display, or you've got the right shopper. So you've profiled that audience and you know that that shopper is in market for your car. So these are, this is the core formula. Not complex math at all, but definitely really important for what we're going to show. So here's the deep linking. So on the left-hand side, as an illustration, wanted to show that, again, people go to hundreds of sites um, 20, 24 on average per person, but in aggregate, there are hundreds of useful websites out there that deliver a tremendous amount of value. Everything from automotive car shopping sites to enthusiast sites, which uh, J.D. Power at the Internet, Internet Roundtable just released a study on enthusiast sites showing that they're a really important part of the shopping process, that when folks are looking to, to find a, a new vehicle and they think that they know which make model they want, a lot of them are going to enthusiast sites to hear the, the real deal. Um, and all the way to some general interest sites and news sites that have automotive content. There are, again, many, many different places where you as a marketer can connect with car shoppers, both via mobile and via online platforms. And what we're going to show you here is then how do we take all of these, these places that are relevant where you can be and all these people who have given us a signal that they're in market for a specific make model in your primary marketing area, how do we connect with them? Before I go to live demo, I'm going to show you the three ways that, that we do this. So there are three primary ways that we believe we create relevance with your vehicles displayed to these car shoppers. And the first on the left is this integrated listing. So this is the actual search result that someone conducts. They're giving us a declared intent, right? They're saying, I want this, make this model, and here's the market I'm shopping in. And so what we do is we distribute for our dealer customers their inventory to hundreds of these automotive websites so that they have the opportunity to have their inventory surface within these search results. Second thing we do is we also know that people, when they're reading articles, again, they're, they're searching all the time. They want to see the actual vehicles. We know, and we have a couple partners that are embedding now vehicle listings within content. And I'll show an example of this. So a highly, highly relevant environment. Somebody's given a signal that they're interested in a specific make model, and they're reading content about that. We're now working with partners to insert those specific vehicles within that contextually relevant content. And then finally, those first two, the integrated listings and contextual content, they give us a lot of signals about what people are shopping for. So we also have deployed a sophisticated way of targeting those audience segments by the actual declared intent that they displayed by integrated listings or contextual inclusion. And the, the illustration you're looking at here is how we do that is, is we actually surface that car they were looking at, we call out where they were looking, and then the specific information about the car to make sure we got it right. Right, we have to again, 
be highly relevant to today's digital shopper in order to get engagement. So here I'm going to go live to a demo, which is either going to work out magically or we to get that for any Right. I was just about to tell the audience, I'm like, well, we're going to see how this goes, but, you know, anything can happen on a dealer on webinar, and it usually does. Um, looks like it's going okay so far, Denise. All right. You see the car and driver example. Yes, we see it. You have to take some risks in life, right? So I have <laughs> preloaded a few screens here uh, just to save time. So here I am. I'm a car shopper. I'm out in the Boston area, and I'm on car and driver because I know it's a great source of automotive information. and you know, I decided I want to take a look at this Chevy Silverado, see some, see some actual inventory in my process. So I end, end up on the car and driver inventory search. And you can see on the left, I've done all my searching here. And here, voila, very exciting. I get to see some, some actual cars. Now, what we do in this case is rather than send someone to a lead form, because again, uh, you know, we're very cognizant that few people are filling out those lead forms and find value. We actually, watch what happens when I click on this listing. I'm actually transferred. Dun, 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 dun. I'm going to click on this one. I'm actually transferred to the automotive, uh, the actual listing, the vehicle detail page on the dealer site. How magical is that? I still have my, my window over here, so I can go back and forth. But I'm, I'm transferred over to the dealer site, and here I get to engage directly with the dealer. See the 42 photos that the dealer has. Look at similar vehicles on the dealer lot. And for the dealer, what's magical about this is the dealer here, DavePrime.com, they're only paying lot links when we drive a unique shopper. So if I have not in the last 30 days been to DavePrime.com, I actually, the only time that Dave Prime is paying is for me at that time. So I'm a unique shopper to DavePrime.com, and they pay for unique shoppers. Let's go back to this here. So again, it's a, a listings, integrated listings, and it's a click over to the actual dealer site. Because remember, most of us, 84% of the time, we said, according to J.D. Power, we want to connect with the dealer, we want to go to the dealer's site. So that's what our, our, we do. We drive specific VIN searches to the dealer site, and a dealer customer only pays when we drive a unique shopper. And I'll show some of that unique shopper, those metrics, in just a minute. Let me show another example. Here's another one of our partner sites, LemonFree.com. They've been around since 2007. They deliver a strong shopper audience month after month. Here again, I was looking for that Chevy Silverado in zip code 02108 out in the Boston area. And here again, when I click on Lawless, I'm going to be directly transferred over to the actual VDP on the dealer website. And I love right here, right here, I can chat right away. Here I am, I'm looking at the cards, it's still there. You know, I want to make sure it's still on lot. Look at all these great pictures. Um, hello and welcome, says uh, Lawless here. So again, it's a direct link over connecting that car shopper. Um, and again, we, we try really hard to get our dealer customers at the top of the listings here to connect with these car shoppers. One insight I wanted to point out since the topic is the how. In deploying this VIN-specific strategy, we also highly, highly recommend these live photos or semi-custom photos, even over stock photos. Seven out of ten times when a customer, or excuse me, a car shopper sees a stack photo in this listings, seven out of ten times they're not going to click on it. So um, your opportunity is lost if you don't, if you can't compete in this space with a actual photo or at least semi-custom. So that's integrated listings. I also want to show, actually one thing I want to point out is over here on the right you also see, here's an example of that display ad, highly relevant. What we've done is we've matched. I've done a lot of searches this morning for the 2013 Chevrolet Silverado out in Massachusetts. And so again, we're, we're taking that insight, we're building an audience segment, and we're showcasing them that same vehicle over here in hopes of showing them more 
relevant inventory that matches the searches they told us they were conducting. The last example here is, here's that example of integrated content. So here, I'm researching, I have researched the Chevy Equinox. Here is looking at a different Chevy uh, car this morning, and I wanted to know about the Equinox. Is it right for me? So spending time on thecarconnection.com, which tends to have a lot of robust content about vehicles. And in my journey here, I'm reading uh, you know, general information as well as reviews. And here again, what the Car Connection has done is, and this is a best practice we recommend for most publishers, is they've integrated listings within the content. Again, that insight of no matter where I am in my shopping process, if I'm in market for a car, I want to see the inventory. So they've, they've taken that insight and integrated it in the physical content, and they've taken the signal for what I've been shopping for, and they're showing me relevant vehicles, which once again, it's a click over to the actual dealer's VDP. So I'm connecting directly to the inventory. I'm going to close out of this live demo. So that is how, again, our live demo of how deep linking works. And it's our best recommendation for getting those vehicles in front of car shoppers when they're giving you a signal what make, model, and area they're looking to buy. Okay, now in the last section here, I'd like to transition to some of the, the um, more of the data and the insights we have. So the first thing I want to show you here is what we saw in November for all of our dealer customers. Hopefully you believe me early on when I showed that Mercedes example that we move vehicles faster. Uh, but I wanted to also show you to further quantify that overall at the bottom here. When you look at November, all of the vehicles that were promoted through lot links, the new vehicles that were promoted, we were able to model out and see that those cars moved 55% faster off the lot than vehicles that were not promoted through lot links, were not given that VIN-specific marketing opportunity. On the used side, we saw that vehicles moved 64% faster. So uh, really significant numbers if you're a car dealer, right? Certainly car sales are robust, but there isn't a dealer out there who wouldn't say, that they, they wouldn't enjoy moving their cars faster, and they wouldn't enjoy moving some of those cars that have been sitting on the lot for a large number of days. They wouldn't enjoy moving those uh, primarily um, over anything else that's on their lot. So if you look at the top here, we also wanted to talk about you know, what, what else do we showcase to dealers? What else should you be looking at when you deploy a VIN-specific marketing strategy? Well, number one, unique shoppers. Really important here because I know most dealers get fewer than probably 5,000 customers to their site a month. So driving that relevant traffic is really important. And what we, again, hang our hat on is those unique shoppers. A dealer customer will only pay us if we drive a unique shopper, somebody who hasn't been to their site in the last 30 days. Um, and so we call those, those folks 100% of shoppers. When we compare and we have, uh, when we look at the dealer customer, we have actually scripts on their VDP pages. So we're able to understand what they're driving from a, a paid search and a CM standpoint, as well as what, what, what are the organic results. And we, when we look at what we do, when we advertise VIN specifically, um, we see that we can actually drive more shoppers more efficiently. So if you look over here at the cost per shopper, our cost per shopper is $3.99. It's costing to get somebody to the VDP page from an SEM standpoint, $16.50. And certainly we acknowledge that you need to be in, in search when somebody's looking for your address and phone number. Absolutely acknowledge that. But we also want to point out that uh, probably your first strategy for driving VDP views would be a, a actual model that is, is focused on VDP views, like a lot links model. And here you see 93% of people on average we're new to that dealer website, so we're definitely driving those new car shoppers that hadn't been to that dealer website in the last 30 days. And then uh, what is most important to us over to the right is that engagement, that when you look at the VDPs uh, viewed uh, per shopper, we actually see that people are indeed looking at more than one, one vehicle on that dealer site. So we are driving that, that customer who, again, is indeed looking for cars. 
So that, that, those are the data points that we show on our side. Now I want to click and show you what we have. Um, the first thing that we hear from our dealer customers when they launch with us is, thumbs that aren't going, is that because we're driving traffic and they're paying for shoppers, and on average most of our dealer customers will look to drive 500 at start, that's usually what they start at. When you see this chart here, this is the first thing most dealers, and I'm, I'm always pleased when I'm at a digital dealer or somewhere out um, on a dealership floor talking to a dealer, this is the first thing that they show and that you'll notice when you work on a VDP specific strategy, you're actually going to start to see traffic to your VDPs, the Google Analytics. Very simple illustration, but um, you know, can't, can't overemphasize the importance this is, again, of specific shoppers on those VDP pages. The second thing that most of our dealer customers point out is, here this is another, I pulled this from a Google Analytics from one of our dealer customers. Um, you see the number of sessions. Again, here, 90% of the time for this dealer customer through December, 90% to 9 out of 10 people who came to their site through LotLinks were new. And that always surprises and delights our, our dealer customers. And you can see that's 300 people so far this month that clicked on and engaged with an actual vehicle. I also wanted to show this because this is something we commonly see as well. And we, we, really, um, we, we really recommend that our dealer customers, you know, when they're using Google Analytics, really make sure you have it set up, that you're measuring mobile versus desktop versus versus tablet because we consistently see that this is a mobile audience, that the person looking at vehicle inventory is highly, highly mobile. And in this case, you know, definitely far and away the majority of sessions, of seven out of ten sessions, is being conducted on a mobile device. So really, really important that, again, our dealer customers are measuring this so that they, as they are developing their strategies for their VIN merchandising programs, they're remembering that this is a mobile customer, it's a mobile audience, and that you need to make sure that, that you're ready for that mobile customer. And here, again, 92% of the time, um, that's 218 people that we drove from a mobile experience to look at physical inventory on a dealer's website. All right, let's click over to now, our key takeaways. So, in summary, here are the things that I uh, hopefully imparted upon you and the beliefs we have at LotLinks. First and foremost, marketing vehicle by vehicle will move metal faster. Um, we have volumes of data that have proven this. There also, if you're interested, I have one of the, the resources here. There's a Cobalt study. They studied eight months. They looked at nine million VDP views. They looked at 125 million website visits and they, they came to the same conclusion that the more that an individual vehicle is displayed and the more traffic you drive to a VDP, the faster vehicles move. Car shoppers also want to go to your car dealer website. So, you know, kudos to the automotive community for car dealers spending the time, energy, and effort to get best in breed automotive websites. Now is the time we work together to drive more traffic to those sites and connect more shoppers to those specific cars that they're looking for. Because again, as we talked about, people want to see cars all the time across that 45-day journey. Uh, and also look for creative opportunities to make sure your VINs are on display when you work with your partners. And then finally, we highly recommend, and um, we're the only ones doing this now, but we highly recommend this model where you pay for a shopper. Pay for what, what the value you get. And we vehemently believe at LotLinks that if we drive enough shoppers to a car dealer's website, the car dealer knows what to do with them. They know when that person lands on that VDP page. They know how to engage with them. They know what information to show them. We, we believe that this is the era of the empowered digital dealer. So the more that as a dealer and as for us as a dealer partner that we can send those shoppers to your VDP, the better off the, the car shopper will be in the end as well as the dealer for being able to pay for that value that, that is being driven. Here are some suggested resources as well. I mentioned that Cobalt VIN research, they study 9 million VDP views and I think that's probably a lot of statistical relevance in 9 million. Datium also, if you don't get the, the monthly Datium report, they do a real good job of 
showcasing the top uh, strategies I pointed out, uh, excuse me, the top statistics I pointed out earlier that they measure user website activity and they report on the, uh, the actual average number of leads and website visits. So you could use that as a strong benchmark. McKinsey does a strong, uh, they do a real good study on innovating automotive retail. Their 2013 study is the most recent. I'm hopeful that any day their 2014 study will, will come out. And what I like about that is, is um, you know, they're, they're a consulting firm that's out of our industry, so um, it, it's just another authority for us to point to in, in automotive. And then in Q1, we'll be doing a lot of the things we talked about today. We'll be doing some thought leadership as well. So, Eliana, what do you think? Should we go to some questions now? I've talked a lot. I'd love to hear more from the audience. Denise, that was phenomenal. Thank you so much. That presentation was great. And audience, if you have a question for Denise, well, let's get them. Uh, send them on in. We're going to get to your questions in just a moment. Before we do that, though, we're going to let her take a little sip of some water. we got some business to take care of. Yeah, it's that time. If you missed it at the beginning of the webinar, well, I announced that our good friends at LotLinks they got a few prizes to give away today, and they're very, very awesome prizes. So I hope you're paying attention. Um, the prizes are up on the screen now. First, they're going to be giving away two special, two special reservations to their exciting invitation-only party at the lovely Samovar Restaurant in San Francisco during the upcoming NADA convention. So if you're going to NADA, well, I got a prize for you. Now, if you're not going to NADA, then sit that one out because we got prize number two, which is open for everyone. Prize number two, it's a big one. This is three months free subscription to the revolutionary LotLinks advertising program. It's the highest ROI, lowest cost, most effective way to connect car buyers to your inventory and move that inventory off your lot even faster, this prize. This prize, woof, it's valued at almost six thousand dollars. And as I can, as we all know, that is a tremendous prize for your dealership. Not to mention the incredible number of cars that you're probably going to sell with it. So, um, everyone, if you're ready to play, so am I. Get ready. Get to your keyboards. First person to write in the correct response will be winning one of these awesome prizes today. So we've got two different questions. The first question is going to be for prize number one. I'm going to ask everyone who is not going to NADA to sit this one out, leave this one for the people who can actually use this prize. You got to be going to NADA or at the very least, you know, living someplace close to San Francisco, I guess. All right. So if you're going to uh, be going to NADA, this question is for you. Good luck, everyone. These questions are not easy. So good luck, everyone. All right. Here we go. According to Polk data, what is the average number of times a car shopper conducts an inventory search. Ooh. <laughs> the very first person to write in had the correct response. My hey. dear friend, Joe Pozo. How are you doing, Joe? 84. That is correct. 84. Someone was paying attention. You weren't the only one, though, but congratulations, Joe. Uh, I'm so excited to see you at NADA. I'm writing your name down, Joe. You know how this goes got to write in and let me know the uh, name of your dealership so I can tell everyone. And uh, also, um, Denise, do you need a, a mailing address or just email and phone number is good enough, right? Email would be fantastic. All right, all right. So there you go. I have his email address, so I got that. So Joe, congratulations on that. You know what, Joe? You're already a winner today. That's not unusual for you, I know. So you can sit this one out. <laughs> You can sit this this next question out, but congratulations, you won a really wonderful prize. Oh, Joe Rodney says, thank you so much. We will be there, and that is Naples Nissan. So All right. congratulations. All right, here we go. All right, so audience, if you're not Joe Pozo, but you still <laughs> want to win a prize, <laughs> then this question is for you. Like I said, this prize is valued at over, or almost $6,000. So good luck, everyone. This is not an easy question, but good luck, everyone. Here you go. According to LotLinks, what percentage of car shoppers that come into the dealership are anonymous and self-directed and have had no previous contact with the dealer? Ooh, man, you guys are fast. Let me see. 
Again, the very first person to write in had the correct response. Gary Miniman. I hope I said that right. He got the correct response in first with 70%. Congratulations, Gary. I'm inking your name down right now. Gary, write on in and let me know what dealership has just benefited from this very, very generous prize from LotLinks. Gary Miniman. Gary Miniman, congratulations. And uh, honestly, audience, thank you so much, everyone, for playing along. I hope you like our, our awesome giveaways that we do every week. Um, let me see. Oh, Gary says, thank you, Sunshine Toyota. Wow, you guys are great. Okay, uh, congratulations, Joe. I'll see you at NADA. Congratulations, Gary. You've won yourself another amazing prize from LotLinks. And, of course, thank you all, everyone, for playing along. Uh, and, of course... Thank you to our good friends at LotLinks for their incredible generosity. That was wonderful. All right, Denise, anything to say before we start with the questions? That was fantastic. Congratulations, <laughs> Joe and Gary. Agreed, agreed. Okay, I'll tell you what. We got our first question that came okay. in. Denise, if you're ready. I'm ready. All right, and on. audience, like I said, if you have a question for Denise, let's get to it real fast, okay? So uh, your first question comes in from Sharpie. He says, uh, during your live presentation, Denise, you know, when, when you actually went onto the, the Internet, he was wondering, are the only listings on these sites lot links listings? But those were the ones you were actually intending to show, correct, Denise? Correct. Okay. Correct. Um, so our next question comes to you from Dewey, and maybe I should have saved this one for a little bit later, but Dewey says, currently we are on car clicks. How is LotLinks different? Yes. So LotLinks, we really believe, again, in connecting car dealers with car shoppers, so the, the, those vintenders. So for us, clicks. Clicks can, clicks, can, clicks can be misleading, right? There can be, there's bot traffic, there are foreign clicks out there. We don't want our dealer customers to pay for any of that non-relevant traffic. We only want them to pay for shoppers. So our model of a cost per shopper really incorporates all of our technology in making sure when we look at that transfer, Again, is it a bot? Uh, again, very sophisticated methods for us to weed out any type of, of a click that is not going to turn into a shopper. And that, again, includes foreign traffic. So if you're buying clicks and it works for you, great. If you're happy with that, you're going to be thrilled with buying shoppers because it takes it that step further in, again, really verifying and certified. One, it's a human being. It's an actual person that we profiled for you and that we identified as being a good match for your vehicle and they actually are in your primary marketing area so they can buy your car and, and you only pay for that, that traffic. So slight nuance but critically important in the actual relevance that, that we drive. Fantastic. All right. Uh, Dewey, if you have a follow-up question, please don't hesitate to write on in or if you'd like to take it offline. Denise would be happy to talk to you offline. Look, she has all of her contact information right there for you, all right? So thank you so much for the great question. We only have a few more questions left, so let's get to those. Our next question comes from Ilango. I like the name. All right, Ilango says, how do you guarantee a dealer's inventory is on all 200 sites? Can a bigger dealer be placed on more sites than a smaller or independent dealer? In working with all of those partner sites that we showed, the reality is each of those sites looks at the inventory feeds they get, and they do get, for Sharpie's question earlier, they do get feeds from other sources, but when an actual publisher looks at that inventory, each publisher is going to value a little bit different what they display. Now we do know there are some common themes, and we work with our dealer customers to make sure, again, Pictures, real pictures um, are important. You know, a lot of publishers out there won't display vehicles if they don't have pictures. You know, sometimes there's the, you know, the, the ghost picture of a car. So there are all these nuances that each individual publisher looks at to determine which cars appear. And then layer on to that, they also look at uh, financially, how will they benefit and 
with our model, we tend to, um, because we can help them better monetize most of their traffic, we tend to appear higher on the listings than other choices. Uh, but in summary, to the, the answer to that question is each publisher is different and it's really incumbent upon us to, um, we have a dedicated team to work with those publishers, understand their needs so that our dealer customers appear at the top in the most relevant scenarios on those search engine results or search results pages. Great. Okay, Elango, if you have a follow-up question, please write on in and let me know. We only have a handful of questions left to get to, so Denise, let's keep moving. Your next question comes to you ah, from one of today's winners, Joe. He says, <laughs> he says, will AutoTrader or Cars.com allow someone on their sites to click on their VDP and it get redirected to our website? Joe seems very impressed by this. Denise, what do you have to say about that? <laughs> we would hope so. If that's what you hear is saying, and that's what you know is a is a valued connection for for the car dealer. Um, I, you know, I can't speak for Cars.com or Auto Trader. So far, they both seem to be very uh, vocal in that they're building audiences and that the person on their site should remain on their site. Uh, but again, it, it lot links, we'd be hopeful that more, more partners out there would adopt this model and build out the ecosystem. It, you know, it seems odd to us that there's everyone is in the lead business, but um, you know, so far we're the only ones in the cost per shopper business. So we think that there's room for all and let's, you know, we would love again for, for more of the, uh, the larger sites to, to get involved in, in driving shoppers to the dealer's BDP and creating a, an experience that the user is asking for. I hear you. Oh, well, Joe wrote back and he says, awesome. I hope they do. I was thinking, how are they going to stop you? So, <laughs> thank you, Joe. <laughs> All right. Uh, we did have a follow-up question from the, the questioner before, Elango, wrote back in. Thank you so much for your answer, Denise. So, the better the quality of inventory and perhaps better price compared to others, the higher they may appear? Not necessarily. I think the quality, yes, you hit on the quality. So we like to call this click candy. So as a dealer, when you think about your listings, how do you make sure it's click candy? That when somebody is looking, and again, they're looking for that specific make model in your primary, uh, primary marketing area, how do you make sure they, they're going to select you? So definitely that quality is a, is a really important point, and I'm glad you brought that up. So like, moving away from stock photos, making sure your listing's comprehensive. I've seen a lot of creativity in the, that actual picture with dealers. Um, definitely quality is going to, going to matter um, quite a bit. Now pricing on the actual vehicle, and this is supported by Cobalt, some of the things we've noticed on our back end, it's actually color is the thing that people most click on when they're clicking on a vehicle, which is interesting that um, we all think it's price, but when you're, you look at that search results page of all those vehicles, most people are looking for a color match. So I really wanted the red one. I want to see the red one, and I'm going to click there, secondary to, to the price of that actual vehicle. Huh. That's really interesting. I did not know it was the color. All right. Ilango, thank you so much for the great question. We do appreciate it. Okay. Uh, let's get to these last few questions. Your next question, Denise, comes to you from John, and he says, does the dealer, or lot links, decide which sites can use lot links to put the customer onto the VDP? We decide, and how we work, work um, with this, uh, this process is we're constantly out in the market trying to find the, the, you know, the best user experience, and uh, we want, uh, our goal is to be across every site possible, right? If we do that, then we win for our dealer customers because we, again, that reach is so important. We get that maximum reach out for those vehicles. And the more a vehicle is seen, the more likely it's going to move off a lot faster. So we, again, like to do a, an atomize and distribute your inventory in as many places as possible, all with that underlying theme of relevancy because that is going to make sh that is going to ensure your cars move faster. Got you. All right, John. Thank you so much for the question. If you have a follow up, hey, write on in and let me know. 
All right, let's get to this question from Gary. He says, oh, Gary, you're our winner today. He's, he's the other winner that we had today. Gary had a question for you. He says, is there a sold conversion rate that you find for the shopper's lot links sends to dealer sites? A sold conversion rate. I think you said, um, you know, where uh, other third, I think you had a graph on it. There were other third party sites that were like at 8.8, I'm sorry, 0.88 lot links was at 1.1 yeah, or something like that? that? We do, we do. We actually, I don't have that, uh, shame on me, I don't have that number off the top of my head, but we do measure vehicles um, that are part of that velocity, vehicles that are promoted by lot links and uh, what percentage sells. So we do track that, and I apologize, I don't have the average off the top of my head. Um, but that is something we do track for our dealer customers. So what you can expect in working with us, and we will be working together it seems, what you can expect is at, after three months, we gather enough data and enough understanding of your inventory, and we've distributed it in enough places, that we're actually able to provide that robust reporting to you. In where you can see the actual lift in velocity as well as number of sales that um, came from those vehicles. We have some of our sophisticated dealer customers also work with us and you know give us access to their CRM to be able to look at that that information as well. So that's um, you know definitely a critical important point. Gary, you're going to find out in not so much time how, how good the conversion rate is. I'll tell you what. Um, thank you so much for the question. Uh, last question, Denise, comes, to, oh, wait a minute, Gary wrote in, no problem. Thanks for the answer, and yes, we will find out our own answer. Yes, you will. <laughs> All right, your last question, Denise, comes from Craig. <laughs> Craig says, would you recommend starting with new or used if you were planning to trial lot links for a few months? Great question. I love that question. I would want to know which of your inventory has been hanging around longest. It's probably most likely your used. So I'm going to say if you're going to join Craig, let's start. Let's look at your used. Let's focus there and uh, move that inventory because my gut is you probably have a few more used cars and that they're probably hanging around a little bit longer. And if we do what we do right for you, we will make sure that those cars uh, get some accelerated uh, speed in moving off your lot. I love that. All right, Craig, you got a follow-up? Let me know really fast because we did get one last question that got snuck in. Darwin uh -huh. got it in under the wire. He says, uh, Denise, oh, oh, Craig says thank you by the way. Denise, um, do you recommend showing the LTV on vehicles to encourage buyers that a car is a better buy than the competition? Oh, clever. Yes, I do. <laughs> I think it's a real good idea. There you go, Darwin. I hope it works out for you. All right, yes, Denise. Yes. I'm sorry, what did you say? <laughs> did, yes, I, did I talk over you? I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, Darwin said, is she hiring? <laughs> <laughs> We're always hiring, right? Well, there you have it. I'm, I'm here to answer any questions. I give any, Every question that comes in, I send over to my presenter. So, Denise, you have been a wonderful, wonderful presenter. Thank you so much for being here today. I loved your presentation. And truly, this really, this really is a revolutionary software that you guys have. I wish you the very best of luck with this because I know LotLinks is brand new. So congratulations and good luck. And audience, if you'd like to get in touch with Denise and find out more about LotLinks and what they do, her contact information has been up there for a while. I hope you take advantage of that. And uh, Denise, before I sign off with you, if, uh, you know, Merry Christmas, Happy New, you know, Festivus for the rest of us, whatever it is you celebrate. But, um, you know, if you want to say goodbye to the audience, please do so. Thank you, everyone, for joining today. And I look forward to working with a few of you in the future. And definitely reach out to me directly if you have some questions. 
Agreed, agreed. Um, people are writing in. <laughs> You're very welcome, Denise. Really, it was my pleasure. People are writing in. You are awesome. Thank you. Great presentation. I couldn't agree more. And, of course, want to remind the audience, a link to download a copy of this webinar recording is going to be emailed to you later today for your reference. Please share it with your friends and colleagues. And this webinar is also going to be posted online within 24 hours. All you have to do is go to dealeron.com slash webinars and there you can view our up upcoming webinar schedule or access any of our past webinars too. Also, you're going to receive a short survey when I close out this webinar in just another minute. Denise, you can go to that next slide if you wouldn't mind. And when you get that survey, Please fill it out. We want to know what you thought of today's presentation and how you thought Denise did. It's a very short survey. I think it's like five questions. Really, it will take you no time at all to finish the survey, okay? But it's important to us. We'd love to know what you thought. And that's how we know if we're doing a good job or, uh, you know, how we can make it better for you. We're going to randomly select a couple of people from all the completed surveys to also win some Google Prizes. What's not to love? Also want to let you know, Dealeron is going to be exhibiting and presenting at the upcoming NADA in San Francisco next month. So um, if you're going to be there, well, we, we would love to see you. you got to stop by booth 5552W and say hi. We have the best booth. We have music. We have drinks. Oh, uh, Denise, if you could go to the next slide, I'd really appreciate it. Um, while you're getting your NADA on, I want you to check out, look, we got four different speakers from our dealer on executive team that are going to be speaking at NADA. So please try and catch one or all of them. We would really appreciate it. And by the way, they're they're kind of brilliant, so <laughs> you'd be doing yourself a favor. And uh, last slide on the deck, our next dealer on webinar. Well, guess what? It isn't until Thursday, January eighth. Got three weeks off. That's right, January 8th of 2015. So invitations won't be going out until next year. But just so you are in the know, the first webinar of 2015 is going to be amazing. It is our first in a quarterly series we're calling Dealer On Academy. This is going to be the Q1 Automotive Marketing Briefing. This is a brand new quarterly automotive marketing panel with the Dealer On leadership team. So Join members of the Dealer On executive team to learn about current automotive marketing updates, industry perspectives, and best practices. This reoccurring webinar will be packed with great information focused on helping dealers navigate new and maybe even some old technology along with marketing best practices and perspectives surrounding our industry. The webinar is designed to be an interactive exchange with ample time dedicated to Q&A and the collective knowledge of Dealer On's leadership team includes retail automotive, technology, marketing and service experience. You just can't afford to miss these webinars with Amir and Ali Amirzvani, Chris Daringer, Sean Rains, Jason Azell, and Jeff Clark. And don't forget, Dealeron's weekly webinars are held Thursdays, 12 noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, 9 a.m. Pacific. And like I said, get ready for a new year of webinar awesomeness because we are going to rock it in 2015. But if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions regarding these webinars and our topics, hey, feel free to contact me directly. Again, my name is Eliana Raggio. I would love to hear from you. So track me down online, Facebook. Twitter, Google+, any of our automotive social networks, or email me directly at eliana at dealeron.com. Thank you all so very much for spending this time with us today. I hope to see you all on another webinar in our continuing education series, and from all of us here at DealerOn, and from our good friends at LotLinks, to all of you and yours, we want to wish you a warm, joyous, and wonderful holiday season and new year. I'll catch you on the flip side. Take care. <laughs>